is everybody? I said, how is everybody? There we go. It's a, it's a beautiful... I don't know about you, but um, I love being in worship. Anybody else? Yeah. I'd, like the week, the week that you've just had, lots of things have happened, right? But there's something about being in worship. It takes your focus off everything that is happening and puts your focus on to the one who controls it all. I think I'm speaking to the right church, yeah? This is not the Spanish-speaking church, yeah? This is the English-speaking. I, d- I felt compa- I mean, it's been a, it's been a ple- pleasure and a privilege for us to be with KDM Church today. Um, I thought to myself, wow, three services, and this is how, let's, I wonder how this is going to go, but what a sheer, feel enthused, energized, refreshed by being in the presence of God here and seeing what God is doing so grateful for you pastors now now here if you're a church cynic people say well we always thank the pastors first and both myself and sarah we've we've been married 25 years we've got two children got a 19 year old a 17 year old been leading church for 12 years it's been really tough at times and one of the things that we refuse to do is we refuse to just do things because people say that's what you should do but actually when I, when we arrived here on thursday night um had a bit on Friday, I don't know if anybody saw this, but the sun was out all day on Friday, and it was warm. Now, apparently, I've read a verse somewhere in the scriptures that said it's because when Pastor Paul and Sarah arrive in Krakow, the sun will shine. I think it's some, the sun will shine on the righteous. I, I don't know, anyway, anyway. But it, it, it was sun, it was sun, that's... That, that was heresy right there. But when, when we arrived here, I just thought this, there's something incredible about the church here and I came 10 years ago and probably was a little, I don't know, a lot lot different. I used to have thick dark hair back in the day. I don't think Zibby's really known me with hair that much. I definitely didn't have blonde hair. But there's something about the perseverance of this house. I said straight away to Sarah, I said, if there's anything we're gonna do this weekend is we're gonna ensure that we encourage people to keep persevering. And, and we speak to both you, Zibby and Magda, pastors of this house to the rest of the teams um, a privilege of mine to speak into Bartek earlier uh, your son and I'm not just highlighting him but the love for God's house that's in that young man I think wow what a well done well done church well done church you for keep persevering with building an atmosphere of faith vitality this is this is what it says Maybe if I could ask gracefully, whether I could ask if everybody in the room, we could just stand to our feet just for a moment. I'm just going to read from the Word of God. That's no, don't worry, don't feel condemned because you sat down. That's it's just that I'm just going to read something from the Word of God that I I felt compelled to pull up on my phone early and just did it out a matter of uh, it was ease. And this is I've, every service this morning I felt has been a little different. Um, and I feel like God maybe wants to do something specific in this service in the next 20, 25 minutes that something's going to break in the room for you personally. Um, we believe in for the church, heart for the house. We, we're, we yes and our men to the heart for the house. We yes and our men to a bigger, more expansive place that can do more in the in this city and the cities beyond. But maybe just in your life today, this is what the Lamentations chapter 3 says. Maybe this resonates with you. I have been deprived of peace and I have forgotten what prosperity is. So I say to myself, my splendor is gone and all that I had hoped from the Lord. I remember my afflictions and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I will remember them well. And my soul is downcast within me. Yet... Say to the person next to you, yet, yet, this I call to mind, and therefore we have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your... Third 
service in KDM, the English speaking service. Great is your faithfulness. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him. There's good news for you right there. Not, not the TV channels. There's good news. The good news is the Lord is good to those whose hope is in him. To the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. I don't know whether that resonates with you and your life at times, but I know it does with me. And the one thing I love about praise and the fact we're singing this song that is globally being sang, praise the Lord, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, is because it brings to mind everything that God has previously done for you and says in the middle of the season that you're in, whether it's a drought or a famine season that you're in, whether spiritually you feel dry, whether you emotionally feel wrecked and, and disrupted, the, the declaration is, praise the Lord, oh my soul, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Now, here's my encouragement to you. Here's my encouragement to you. Not as part of the service, but what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna do a small segment of this song that gives you the ability in this moment, it's a choice. You can lift your hands in worship, you can put your hands together and applaud heaven, you can thank, be thankful to God, you can even get it, like in our church, this is a struggle sometimes, back home in England, but even you can move your feet and dance before the Lord undignified. People come to me after the service and say, oh, Pastor Paul, wow, those dance moves that you had today, and I said, listen, David danced a little bit more undignified than what I was doing right there, but I know this, if it's good enough for David, then it's good enough for me, and if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for you. I think we need to shake something off and pray for the Lord, oh my soul, just for a few moments. So whether, wherever you are, what we're going to do is we're going to try and just, we're going to chop this in, we're going we're gonna to go for it, we're going to put our hands together, but there's going to be a breakout of praise in this room, not for the song, but because of what God has done, what we believe in God will do, and the fact that He is still faithful today. You don't feel it? That's the point. The point is you don't feel it. Our praise is not a feeling. So people just see this. Just for, are you ready, KDM? Is this the best service in the house? three rows really I think everybody should be at the front in the in the in the praise because what, what we're doing now is we're prophetically declaring to the principalities and powers that nothing will stop his church nothing will stop his people as, as pastor Josiah told us earlier we serve the undefeated the living God so I'm gonna really dig I, I, I leave this country tomorrow I go back to England you'll not find me if you want to come and have an argument with me but I would dare you to come to me and show me scripture that says not to dance undignified before the Lord and to give him praise and to give him glory this is the house of God you've had a hundred a hundred and sixty hundred and sixty hours to be quiet before the Lord we've literally got 20 minutes 
of time together where we can just praise him. So we're going to just, just jump back in. I feel like every religious bone in my body is broken. And we're just going to give him praise just for these few moments. Okay, come on, everybody. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. to God I think that was kind of part of the message but it was kind of part of the message it's kind of not kind of take your seats wherever you are a good number of years ago a good number of years ago I got to run a marathon I've run a marathon twice in my life 26.2 miles it's a long way it's a long way and you have to be physically prepared to run a marathon the reason I say that is because I feel on this house there is a different spirit there's a perseverance spirit upon this house. You're part of something that is not normal. Believe you me, I could take you to England and I could put you in many different towns and cities and place this church in England and you would be described as a little bit different. Because b back home, a lot, a lot of churches which we fight week in, week out to ensure that we keep the temperature of our own church at a high level, but people just feel like it's almost this religious experience that we go to. And the, the, the spirit of perseverance, what I'm choosing to say today in this short period of time, I don't know how heaven's doing the timings of uh, the preaching clock up there, but it's got up by five or six minutes in the last few moments. I think it must be a miracle. It keeps going up and down and I, I don't know what's happened. It's gone, it's, gone, it's gone up. It's gone up again. But there's, a, there's, a, there's an Elijah spirit in this house. And when I say the Elijah spirit, Elijah was... There's a, there's a portion of scripture, 1 Kings 18, I haven't got the, lots of time to read the whole passage to you, but you can read it today, it will take you five minutes, maximum. If you're a slow reader, one chapter of scripture will take you five minutes. 1 Kings chapter 18 starts off where Elijah is in a situation where there is not only a drought, but there's also a famine. It's not good news. There's lots going off. Not only is there a drought and a famine, but more importantly, people are turning to other gods. Now, now back home in, in my town, I, I read scriptures like that and think, wow, people used to worship all these other gods. And we can walk around our towns and our cities thinking, well, that was back in those days. There's many, many gods in your city that I saw them this weekend. Uh, I mean, we met two people on Friday night. We went quickly, Thursday night, we went into this little burger bar. We thought, this is really cute. It looks really nice. We went into this burger bar. These two guys start staring at us. Literally, we didn't realize it, but then they started following us down the street. And then so quickly, I held my wife, Sandra, said, quick, shall we just have a little jog? And we ran a little bit distance further. And, and, and I could see that they'd engage maybe on the night, on the evening with a different God. Yeah. They'd been doing things that probably sent the mind a little bit you know, like having some different thoughts. And, and back in Elijah's day, people were serving different gods, but also they were faced with drought and famine. I don't know about you, but I think they're difficult times to live in. And one of the things that I've learned about falling in love with Jesus, and I say that quite unashamedly, falling in love with Jesus and his word. Anybody saying amen to his word today? I mean, don't let, this, don't let this ever become like some sort of tag on to the Christian faith. This is the basis of the Christian faith. This is, this, is the, this is the restorer of your soul. This is the one that's going to give you strength and courage. This is not just something we do for five minutes to tick off on a devotional list. 
How many of you know that we're season in, season out? One of the things I've come accustomed with is that I can't press on and pursue the things of God without being in his presence. It's why we prioritize church. I think this third service, like we, we should be prophetically cheeky, but this third service probably should be the largest service in KDM. The reason I say that is because there's probably lots of English speaking people out there that don't know about Jesus. And we're going to get inspired today to go and leave this place and bring people back into the presence of God because we can't do this journey alone. We can't do it alone. But season in, season out, I've come to understand that the word of God speaks in the good times and it speaks to me in the tough times. The beautiful thing was that Elijah declares, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41, Elijah declares, Go eat and drink, for there is the sound of heavy rain. Some of you will be familiar with this, and maybe you might think, oh, is he just pulling a verse out of here? The reason I'm just bringing that verse to you is just to highlight to you that Elijah had a different spirit. Your pastors have a different spirit. The teams here have a different spirit. The atmosphere has a different spirit. It has a persevering spirit. I ran this marathon, and I got 23 miles into the marathon, and my, my, I, I trained for it, and I was like, hey, I'm going to look good. My wife said, I'll be there at mile 22 to see you with my two children. And my two children were there, and they'd made, like, banners waving, like, I don't know, saying, go, Daddy, and we're proud of you. And I made sure, you know, that moment, I'd been really struggling up to that point. As soon as I saw my children, I started to glide through the air and, like, hey, it's easy. Four miles left. There's not a pain in my body. And... Um, I ran past them and hit mile 23. I ran to mile 23 and there was a Lucasay drinks uh, drink stall there. And I'd not really stopped much for a drink for the first 23 miles, but I thought I'm going to get a Lucasay because I'm going to run the last three miles so good. And I picked up this drink and right in front of me was, um, there was a couple of ladies that were, were stood in front of me and, and, and I, I came to a halt and I stopped. I stopped. And I took a drink and then I was like... I can't do this. I literally can't do this. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to, how to progress any further. And I took another drink of the Lucasade. And believe you me, Lucasade does not do anything for you in those moments. <laughs> I, drank, I drank it and I, I wandered to the middle of the road and my legs were hurting. I felt stiff and, and like my bones were hurting. And all I remember hearing was on the sidelines was some people because I'd got my name on my shirt. You have to have your name on the front and the back. And they, shout, they started to shout, come on, Paul, you can do this. Come on, Paul, you can do this. Come on, Paul, you can do this. And I'd, I moved from the center and I thought, come on, Paul, you can. And I'd, and I'd begin to run and, and I finished the marathon, did it in three hours, 40 minutes. I was a little longer than what I wanted to be. And it, it, was, a, it was a great experience. But what I do remember is that in the spirit of perseverance, there's something about being in the presence of others that are going to sing, are going to worship, are going to pray, are going to stand with you in that environment. See, Elijah was in this environment where it's just, it's all systems going and, and people, are, people are struggling. There's, there's, there's a lack of faith in the, in the place. But I have to understand this, that praise isn't about a feeling. Praise isn't about a feeling. Praise is about your faith and where it's rooted. You know, like we all love to live for those moments. I, I enjoyed singing praise a few moments ago. I think that your, your worship team are incredible. I think you're blessed to have such a good worship team. And I love, I love those... I love those goosebump moments where everybody's just dancing and I try my best moves and some of you are like, don't do that anymore, you're embarrassing, I know. But I love those goosebump moments. But what I've come to realize is the goosebumps are not there on Monday morning. Elijah realized that in those moments when there was drought, famine, and people worshiping other gods, it, 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 there was no goosebumps. It was about his faith and his reliance and his trust in the living God. That audacious that he stood before the people and said to them, be quiet, listen, because I hear the sound of heavy rain. In fact, he said, go eat, drink, and celebrate, because I can hear something's changing. And I want it to be an encouragement to you today and speak over this house. It's time to celebrate because I can hear the sound of heavy rain. There's families in this room today hear the sound of heavy rain. Some of those situations you thought you would never shift 
and never see change. There is heavy rain on the way. How do you celebrate even though you're in a drought? It is literally called faith. I'll praise when I feel it. And I'll praise when I don't. That's the words of the song. Hebrews 10, 23 says this, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Yeah. My two teenage kids, 19 and 17, I'm telling you what they hold firmly to at times, they hold tightly to these. Yeah. I think if we held more tightly to the promises of God than we do our phones, maybe the church and our lives would be in a de in totally different place. Yeah. Like we, we, I mean, you think... Look at the person next to you who's got the phone and just whip it out of the hand real quick. I'm telling you, they'll grasp it. Look at that. I saw that hand there. The, this lady in the middle, I don't know who she is just right now, but she rebuked the man sat next to her in that moment. She's like, get your hands off this. I saw it. It was like first hand. That was a good moment. Have an argument about it later as well. Ah, oh, dear me. Let's be a people that persevere. And our perseverance is through the fact that we hold on to what we profess, our faith. When there's no building and no land available, we hold on to our faith. When, when, when things just don't seem to be going right at work or at home, we hold on to our faith. When we got married 20, 25 years ago, I mean, it's, we got married and we made that much of a commitment, I struggled to get my ring off at times. But when we got married 25 years ago, I committed to my wife, Sarah, not that just a goosebump moment of faithful, like, oh, I adore you. I think you're beautiful. But we committed. We committed to live faithfully, to hold on to each other. And we've had some good times and we've had some tough times. And Elijah declares a spirit of perseverance that says, listen. You might not feel it, you might not sense it, but I hear the sound of heavy rain. It's called faith. I don't know if that speaks to anybody in this room, but I think maybe there's some situations in your life that you need to hold unswervingly to the hope that God has given you. Maybe tonight, like I think we're going to do, both, I've been joking a little bit with Zibby, your pastor, about the fact that... In England, people in this country, I'm going to try and phrase this right, but the, 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 the eating the good sausage from Poland, that's what I've been told. And so I've, I've asked, and he said, tonight we're going to celebrate after these few days. And he says, I'm going to have proper, proper Polish sausage this evening. So proper, like the, the real stuff. We're, we're going to celebrate together. And when we do that, I'm believing that in some of your homes, wherever you are this afternoon and this evening, you're going to eat and drink together and celebrate the fact that God has not forgotten us and God is still moving and God is still working. He's still breathing and he's about to bring a heavy rainfall to your world. Anybody going to celebrate with us tonight? We, we, I could be cheeky and invite everybody to Zibby's house, but I probably shouldn't do that. Let me, just, let me just wrap things up with just these few things real quick. Both myself and Sarah, we, we chatted about this. One of the challenges of church and the Christian living is this. And I feel like I can say it maybe a little bit more direct in this service. But in our lives, we either choose, we either choose to confuse people or to create curiosity. I listened to your pastors speak today and, and the different services, the heart for the house. I do believe this house, the perseverance that's in this house is there to bring a curiosity to this city and beyond where people will say, what is it about that house? Now, the, the flip side to that is we can bring curiosity to people, but we can also bring confusion. We can bring confusion where you hear people say, well, I thought you were a, a man or a woman of faith, but yet the house of God's not a priority to you. I, I, I thought you were like always praising, but hey, you're in a difficult time and yet now you, you don't and, and things have been let slip and 
we either create confusion or curiosity. Back home in my own church, we, we speak openly to, to maybe to young, young couples that, that gathered in the crowd and we say, hey, listen, you know, the Bible does clearly say a few things about relationships because we either create curiosity or confusion. And you, you, you don't need me to go too much deeper into that. You know exactly what I'm saying. We create curiosity in the church because we worship, because we believe he's the way maker, even when we don't know the way. Anybody say amen to that? Even when we don't know the way we worship him, we praise him because we believe that he is our provider, even when we don't have it all on a spreadsheet. I know some people love a spreadsheet and you love your budget, but sometimes it doesn't work out. But we still praise him because we believe that God is our provider, our employer is not our provider. And we serve him because we believe that he is our source. He is our therapy. So many people in England are searching for therapy, booking therapy appointments. And I believe in therapy. Therapy, if you're having therapy, is a good thing to do. Because I do think we need to express our emotions and we do need to be able to have input and listen to others to speak back into our lives. But the word therapy actually comes from a word, I think it's called therapin, which actually means to serve. And maybe, just maybe, before the beginnings of time, God put an actual therapy there for each and every one of us. Not only would we worship and praise, but as we serve the house of God, therapy comes to us. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. The story, the story of Elijah was, you know, there's all these gods and... There's famine and drought. But one of the things I think is really important, I just want to highlight these few quick things is this. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever drought, famine season you're going through, there is always God's purposes in the process. We think that God's purposes were just about the drought and the famine, but what Elijah found out was it was the time to bring the downfall of the gods, the other gods. He thought it was just about drought and famine, but actually it was about bringing the purposes of God to a generation of people. And maybe the process that you're going through right now may be difficult and it may be hard, but as you hold unswervingly to the hope that you profess, I do believe this, that you will see God's purposes unfold in your life as you hold on during the process. There's always purpose in the process. Don't dismiss your current process as pointless. Romans 8 verse 28 says this, In all things God works together for... Come on, let's say the word together if you know the word. The word is good. In all things God works together for good for those that love him. What we currently see maybe as a burden will actually become a blessing in Jesus' name. What you see is connected to what you say. Elijah said to Ahab, go eat and drink for I hear the sound of every rain. I do believe we need to be careful as a generation, as a church with our words. If we're to move to a new level, our words are in critically important. You're about to enter a new phase, church. Be aligned, align your words with the word of God. Ensure the words that come out of your mouth, the way that you speak about your children, the way you speak about your household, the way you speak about your husband, the way you speak about your wife. I, I've always made a point, I would never use the stage of any church, of any pulpit anywhere to make fun of my wife. I was brought up in a culture where there were lots of husband and wife jokes and I would hear my old pastor stand on the stage and make fun of his wife. I personally do not want to live with a wife that resents hearing a husband joke about her on stage. I made a conscious decision that I would always honor my wife. And maybe that's difficult for you. Maybe you're going to have to find a creative way to be honorable about different people in your world. It's not always easy, but please remember what you see will be connected to what you say. What are you speaking over your situations? There's another question. What you do in a drought season, will define you. Verse 42 says this, that Elijah in this moment where he's declared heavy rain, but he then bends down and puts his head between his knees and he goes before God to say, God, I'm declaring this, but God, I need you. We've sang it this morning. Oh my God, my God, I need you now. You will be defined by what you do in the drought seasons. 
Elijah went to be with God. He didn't go to be with the opinions of other people. And I think one of the big dangers we have now, as we found out yesterday, I was in a little conversation with Josiah, a young man, and I'm not knocking him for saying it, but he, he came up to us, we're in a different place, not in your city, of course, because in Krakow, nobody would ever speak like this. But this guy said to him, are oh, you from America? Oh, I've heard the downfall of Christianity is happening now in America. And Josiah looked at him and said, pardon? And he's like, oh, no, I've heard that Christianity is falling. Like, I mean, hold on a second. Should we read where we found that verse from? That the Christian faith is going to disappear and fall. So he stopped him and he said, he said oh, so, what, so who's told you this? This young guy goes, oh, hold on one second, hold on one second. Pulls it up on his phone. He said, here, look, it's on TikTok. <laughs> True story. I'm not exactly, he's like, no, no, no. This guy here, he's on TikTok. He's amazing. You should listen to him. I stood there thinking, what Christian preacher would stand on TikTok and tell a generation of people that God's word is failing and his church is crumbling and faith is disappearing? It's important who you listen to. Elijah went to be with God in the drought. He didn't go to TikTok. He didn't go to social media for his opinions. He didn't go to the cool club for his opinions. He went to God for his opinions. The voice that's loudest in your situation, ask yourself right now, which voice will be the loudest? But hey, I saved this little point. I've got two minutes. Well, more on there, but I've, I'm down to two. At the end of the story, Elijah, he sends his servant out and said, listen, not only did I declare it, but he said, now it's time to go and look for it. And he sends his servant out. And I want to remind you this today, church. And this is the last thing. Hopefully I'll be back in the next 10 years to come and see what God does here. I say that with all sincerity as well. I'd love to see what happens here in your city. But the servant goes out. And he goes out once. And he comes back with his head down. No sign of anything. Elijah sends him out again. He says, go look again. Go look again. Go look again, go look again, go look again, go look again. At six times, at six times, stubbornness became part of the story. Because I believe the spirit that's in the life of this church is a spirit that will say, we'll go look again. We've been once, we've been twice, we've been three times, we've been, I've been to look at that relationship once, twice, three times, four times. I've been to look at that six times. And on the seventh time, on the seventh time, he sees a cloud just the size of a small fist. And they agree together, there is rain on its way. I remember, we're just going to pray and we're going to close. I remember, um, maybe you could stand to your feet where you are. You've been sat for 20, 25, 27 minutes, whatever it is. There's no set routine. We don't. We can just do what we can do. Whatever, just for a moment. I, I remember about six years ago, there was a couple in our church. There is a couple in our church. They're on our pastoral team, Fritz and Emma. And Fritz and Emma called us. We had a visiting speaker with us. And I remember sitting with them, having dinner with them. And Fritz and Emma called us. They were pregnant, due to have a baby in the summertime, and it was springtime. And I remember them calling and saying, "Hey, don't know." what we're going to do right now but um, our baby is going to have to be delivered tonight we were like how many weeks are you and I think they were like 20 22 23 weeks I think it was something like that so premature and they were like there's not much hope and I remember that night and them calling us calling us back and saying listen we we're not sure what's going to happen but the baby's being born but they're not sure really how long this child's going to have to live and I remember the following day, both myself and Sarah, we were like, we need to go and see these guys. We need to go and see them in the hospital. I remember going into the hospital room and seeing this very, 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 very tiny, tiny, tiny baby, just the size of a small fist, sat there and, and mum and dad looking over and with some tears in their eyes. And I said, listen, 
All I know is that we need to look again. Not once, not twice, not three times, but we need to keep looking for what God will do. And we prayed and we agreed together in that moment. There was like a stubbornness in our spirit that said, God will not depart until we see you bless this child. I, we celebrated a couple of weeks ago the, this little boy's fifth, fifth birthday. It was his fifth birthday. Healthy, vibrant. Great stories and what about you today? The voice that's saying, the loudest voice that's saying, hey, no, 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 not you and over this church, maybe not our church, maybe a church in another country, maybe, but it's time to look again. Stubbornness is part of your story. Don't forget, during the process, what God's wanting to do. Let's just lift our hands to heaven just in this moment right now. It's my privilege just to be able to pray for you where you are. I know some people are in church today for the first time and you'd be like, wow, what is this? Hopefully it's stirred up curiosity. Curiosity. You know, we're, the reason we lift our hands is in surrender to God to say, God, you're in control. And that battle that you feel sometimes to lift your hands is because there's a raging battle on the inside to say, I want to stay in control. But Lord, Lord God, right now across this room, I don't need to be a prophet to see this, but I know there's many situations that people are believing and trusting you for God that are in the middle of the process. And it feels like a drought and a famine. But today with our hands lifted to heaven, with faith in our voices, we declare today, we hear the sound of heavy rain. We don't feel it. We don't feel it on our skin in this moment. But spiritually, we sense the sound of heavy rain falling. Over Krakow City, we sound, hear the sound of heavy rain. We pray for campuses across this, uh, across this nation of Poland to be planted from this house, Lord God. God, I pray for relationships in this house, Lord God, that would, would burst with vibrancy and health, Lord God. I pray for some businesses within the life of this church that, Lord God, as we choose to keep trusting you, that as we look once, twice, three times, I pray, Lord God, that the seventh time we would see just that we would see that sign of hope in Jesus' name. Lord God, I pray from today that you would explode our thinking, that you would open our eyes to all that you wanted to do, Lord God, for your glory. We trust and we promise to be faithful to you because you've been faithful to us. You are indeed the way maker and we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.